Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining this session today or tuning into the recording on a future date. My name is Kate McLean, and I lead the product marketing team for the Cisco Cloud Security Group. Now, the primary service that our team covers is Cisco Umbrella. And for years, Umbrella has been a leading provider of cloud delivered security, helping businesses of all sizes across all industries connect to the internet with confidence from any device. Now today, during today's coffee hour, we're gonna sit down with one of our incredible customers in the airline industry, Cape Air, and hear about ransomware and security from an airline perspective. For those that might not be familiar with Cape Air, it's based in Massachusetts and flies to over 30 destinations, largely in the Northeast US and Caribbean. Now myself, as a Massachusetts, Massachusetts native, uh, Cape Air flies to some of my favorite summer vacation destinations, including Martha's Vineyard and Nantucket. Now, me and my family were big, huge beachgoers, and I bet that some of you who have joined us today also love the sun, the sand of the Cape, the Vineyard, and Nantucket, too. Now, I am super excited to be joined by Brett Stone, Network Operations Manager at Cape Air. Before I hand it over to Brett, let's cover just a few housekeeping items. Now, if you're joining live today, you have been placed in listen-only mode for the duration of the event, but that doesn't mean that we don't want to hear from you. So please post any questions you have using comments on whichever platform or channel you are watching us from. And Brett will address, address questions at the end once we've gotten through our prepared Q&A. Okay, Brett, your turn. So can you introduce yourself to our virtual audience and share what it's like to be responsible for securing an airline? Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak with you today. Um, I am the Network Operations Manager with uh, Cape Air. Uh, many of you have probably heard of us, and I imagine some of you have flown with us as well. Uh, but we're one of the largest regional carriers in the United States, and we provide small, uh, sorry, we provide service to small communities across the United States with focus cities in New England, the Midwest, Montana, and Puerto Rico, the U.S. Virgin Islands, and British Virgin Islands. Now, working for an airline has a lot of challenges, um, but my area of expertise focuses around maintaining a high availability environment uh, with our firewalls, router switches, phone systems, air to ground radios, um, and all these platforms need to be as secure to, as possible and stay online um, all the time in order to main, maintain operations and safety of flight. Since I run network operations, cybersecurity largely falls in my wheelhouse. And we've been using Umbrella for many years um, as our first layer of protection on all our company machines. Um, and as anyone in the IT industry knows, malware infections um, come in many forms and they can interrupt your workflow and totally ruin a worker's day. Uh, but not only that, they can cause crippling outages. Um, and in the case of an airline, uh, they could cause flight delays, cancellations, lost revenue. Uh, and these are all things as uh, an airline IT guy, we would want to um, avoid as much as possible. So that is, um, in a nutshell, what I do at the airline. And um, I'm very excited to talk more about Umbrella here. Awesome. Thank you so much for that, Brett. So speaking of malware infections, um, ransomware seems to be making a serious return. Um, not new, but for sure coming back with a vengeance. So some experts have even predicted the resurgence of malware um, to be one attack in every 11 seconds this year alone. Um, so what is top of mind for you when it comes to ransomware? Well, um, top of mind is that ransomware comes in many forms. Uh, everything from phishing emails to malicious code on websites, to even target attacks from state sponsors. Um, so every organization, big or small, really needs to have some kind of a strategy or awareness on how to protect yourselves. Uh, I'm sure everyone has seen in the news lately about attacks on uh, certain other companies from the Colonial Pipeline in the springtime uh, to even a uh, steamship authority ferry operator on Cape Cod here. Um, uh, over the 4th of July weekend. Uh, Boston Public Library also had um, an incident over the summer. And if you are watching the news today, 
uh, Twitch is the name of the day, and um, uh, they have had their entire, uh, basically the entire idea of Twitch has been leaked on the internet. Um, and uh, needless to say, um, these ramifications are huge for companies big and small. And we need to uh, basically provide as much protection as possible to eliminate downtime and operational headaches. Um, another thing to consider is that uh, ransomware is constantly changing and they're getting more and complex. And it's sometimes hard to tell if you're reading a phishing email or not. Um, this is where Umbrella really comes in because uh, they have a huge network uh, that looks at every website. And if one of your employees accidentally clicks on a link, um, it's going to block you from going on that website uh, before you can get into trouble. Um, so Umbrella really helps in a lot of different ways. And we're going to expand on this a little bit further. Awesome. Thank you so much for that commentary. So I think um, the folks listening can probably can probably relate, you know, effect, effects, uh, ransomware affects organizations big and small locally, nationally, internationally, um, plenty of regional examples, or even today, the, the example you shared, Brett. Um, so ransomware in general, was that one of your primary drivers for considering Umbrella? I know you were a very early adopter of Umbrella. Um, so I'd want to hear a bit more about what prompted you to explore the DNS layer of protection that we provide. Sure, I would love to talk more about that. Um, as you said, we were an early adopter. We've been with Umbrella since the start. Um, and more or less, when we originally started, we were facing a large amount of malware infections, um, and it was really interrupting our workflow. Um, but as these attacks have been more sophisticated, uh, ransomware has, has really been one of the top uh, things in the last year or so um, that has evolved and um, is really affecting businesses worldwide. Um, so let me give you some examples. Uh, when we first started, uh, we had, or sorry, first started with Umbrella, we had a small IT team consisting of about three staff members. And all day long, we were re-imaging machines or mainly clearing infections, and it just consumed our entire work week. Um, getting more staff at the time was pretty much out of the equation. So we had to do something. We had to find a product that could help us eliminate our problem, and that's where Umbrella came in handy. Um, and, and another thing that I'll touch upon is that since we are an airline, um, and if we had a malware infection, that could really impact a passenger um, in many ways. Um, you know, let's just say you arrived at an airport and there was really long lines at the ticket counter because there was a malware infection on that machine. Um, that was an everyday occurrence for us. Uh, we could have long lines, we could have delays, we could have canceled flights. Um, it was uh, it was really bad. And when we found Umbrella, it really almost solved all our problems immediately. Um, and uh, it, it's been an amazing product and I, I can't speak more highly of it. Awesome. I have so many comments here related to both being a passenger. I recently flew with two young children. I cannot imagine getting to an air, you know, an airline counter and, and feeling the disruption and frustration. So amazing that the security here helps helps to make sure that your uh, network is online and you can better address your your passengers and your customers. But also as it relates to Umbrella, really helping your team get more effective. Right. I'm so happy to hear. Uh, that Umbrella has helped to reduce the number of computers you're re-imaging or, or all of that work that you're doing to remediate infections um, and that we can stop things things earlier. Um, so specifically for Umbrella or at the time OpenDNS, because again, I think you, you you bought into the Umbrella vision so long ago that it was you know branded something different than it is even today. Why did you choose it um, in the beginning? What actually was that, that factor that made you choose it? Uh, what really stood out about Umbrella and uh, even prior to that opened DNS um, was that it worked differently uh, from every other product on the market at the time. Um, uh, Umbrella is cloud-based um, and most of the other products required some sort of physical hardware or appliance that sat on your network. Um, and 
uh, needed things such as port replication, um, or they're really costly. Um, and you really couldn't do a lot of things out of the box that Umbrella can just do as a cloud platform. Um, in addition, ease of use um, by far, that, that was the most simple thing. Um, at the time, we weren't network admins. We contracted a lot of this stuff out. And just uh, me and another guy, we had Umbrella set up and running within hours. Um, and we had it working by the end of the day and almost immediately uh, it showed its value. Uh, we went from uh, basically having to re-image machines all week long or, or scrub malware from machines all week long to having almost none of that overnight. Um, and we're able to focus on things that uh, we needed to do in, um, in IT other than just fixing computers and keeping them on the network. Um, so there was really lots and lots of value and it, it was just a totally different product than everything out there and it just really couldn't be easier to use. Um, and, and that was really the main reason that Umbrella and OpenDNS stood out from every other product in the market. It's just that good. That's so awesome to hear. Um, yeah, it sounds like you bought into the benefits of cloud very early on and then you saw a tremendous time to value, which is, which is great. Um, now, can you tell uh, tell us a little bit more about within Umbrella the functionality that you're specifically using or that you've deployed? Sure, I would love to. Actually, Umbrella can be configured in many different ways. Um, you could do a really simple configuration based on a static IP address in seconds, and uh, uh, protect every computer on your network just that way. But you can go above and beyond that. You can integrate into Active Directory, um, or you could directly integrate it into some of your Meraki products, um, or even other Cisco products, um, such as the new Firepowers. Uh, with the Active Directory integration, you could write policies all the way down to the username, or the computer name, or other Active Directory groups or objects, and you could really narrow down and almost write just a policy for even a single person, and, and it just works. It, it really does, it's amazing. Um, plus there's also off-network protection. Uh, there's a roaming client. Uh, so no matter where you are, you're gonna be protected by some kind of uh, umbrella uh, protection. Um, and uh, on top of that, it, uh, you're not only gonna be protecting your company devices, but you can also protect um, things on guest networks, uh, things like bring your own device. Um, these, uh, you know, just write a policy for your guest network and they're automatically gonna be protected by Umbrella. Um, it, it really can be deployed almost any way you wanna deploy it. Um, it's very easy to use. Um, and there's even someone to call um, if, if you need trouble getting some policies um, uh, squared away. So we, really can be more pro, um, you know, proud of the product and the way we have it set up. And uh, it's really protecting a lot of groups within our Active Directory environment. So sounds like you've highlighted a few of the things, the flexibility of deployment. So integrating with different devices, um, both network devices, security tools, um, the granularity of policies and reporting for Active Directory groups and users. Um, I'm sure that helps both, you said, from a policy enforcement perspective, but on the other end, if for some reason something was to get by, also helps you to better remediate and figure out who who on a network you would need to re-image um, if you've deployed it that way, things like that. Or guest Wi-Fi, that's, you know, um, a good, good protection for your network. Folks that are logging on from the airport, I guess, in your instance, um, and accessing your uh, Wi-Fi, um, protecting those folks while they're browsing and waiting to, to board their plane. Um, now, what about that value? I know you talked about kind of deploying very quickly in a matter of minutes um, by just pointing your traffic to us, but again, granular granular stuff too, um, and, and things just basically disappearing, Those the re-imaging of machines, um, you know, the infections dropping substantially. Do you have any tangible specific outcomes or values that you can talk to about what you saw um, after deploying Umbrella? Uh, well, first and foremost, um, our almost overnight, our uh, malware infections dropped by at least 90%. Um, and, you know, when you have two guys working 40 hours a week, doing nothing but malware infections, and now you've removed 90% of that, 
um, it, there's just so much more work you can get done, um, you know, that is really higher priority uh, than just clearing malware infections. Um, so it's, uh, it, it really is a great product. Um, it's amazing. And um, it showed our value right away um, within overnight and certainly within a week, uh, once we had it everywhere, it was, it was just an amazing difference. Awesome. Um, okay, so a fun question to ask you, I guess, here. Do you have any travel tips to share with our audience before we kind of wrap our, our Q&A? Any insider uh, things? Insider things. Well, um, I, I'll be honest and tell you, I just took my first trip um, since the start of the pandemic. Um, and what I would tell everyone is get out there and travel. Um, uh, studies have shown that COVID does not spread airline on, or easily on air aircrafts, um, and airports have very strict cleaning procedures. Um, even hotels, rent a cars, uh, even all the places you visit have hand sanitizers everywhere. Um, so really, you know, if if you're <clears throat> maybe holding off some travel um, for a while, uh, please get out there and travel. Um, it. It really is safe. Um, I had no problems at all being away for a week. Um, and, you know, I, I just urge you to get out there. Um, and, you know, it's time to time to start traveling again. So I can confer that too. I also just returned from a, my first, I guess, flight post pandemic. Um, and it was so good for the soul to get out of the office, get into the fresh air, see some sun, some sand. Um, and for sure, it felt it did feel pretty safe for sure. Uh, okay, so thank you so much, Brett, um, for all of your amazing insights, uh, driving customer success and seeing the impact we can make is always very top of mind for us here at Cisco Umbrella. Um, and as we continue to roll out more functionality into our cloud security service, uh, we are focused on helping our customers simplify, secure, and scale for the future. Now, we're going to come, we're going to kind of wrap our, our prepared Q&A here, um, but I want to invite customers or I'm sorry, customers, people uh, watching us, the attend, uh, audience, to submit any burning questions they have on whatever channel you are using. So again, use comments, however you're watching us. Um, but Brett, so we can give our, our audience here some time to do so. We, you and I are going to play a little game and I know you're super excited about it because who doesn't love a good word association game, right? So I am going to say a series of random words and I am going to ask you to say the top first three things that pop into your head. Are you ready? Sure, let's go. Okay, so first three things that pop into your head for the word fall. Uh, fall, you know, pumpkins, uh, cool air. Um, uh, beautiful weather. Uh, it's my favorite time of the year. Yes, being in Massachusetts, New England, it is a wonderful time of the year for sure. For sure, you hit most of mine too, except apples. I always think of apple picking, um, which is a good thing to do in in New England too. Okay, pumpkin. What are the first three things that come into your mind with pumpkin? Pumpkin pie, carving pumpkins, and uh, I guess eating them. Uh, <laughs> all super fun. Awesome. Okay, now another one, travel. First three words that pop into your mind for travel. Get out there and do it. Um, it it's it's time to stop staying home. Um, that's that's the, the best advice I can give you. It's time to travel again. Okay, and the last one for you, first three words that pop into your head, umbrella. Uh, the most awesome product ever. <laughs> I like it. I think I'm, that was four, a, but I like it. I like it. Okay, I'm, we've got I'm a big fan. I really am. <laughs> We've got a series of questions I'm already seeing coming in, so I'm gonna just start firing them off to you, Brett. Feel free to, you know, answer however you need to. Um, so here we go. Okay, so Surat from LinkedIn. Um, it's difficult to make every user aware of malware. How do we implement some preventative measures to protect the organization? Uh, I'm glad you asked that question. Uh, this is very important. Uh, when you go and you set up your policies, uh, these policies can be um, categorized in, in many different ways. Uh, but one of the, the best thing to do is to set up uh, a security policy and to make sure you're, black, um, you're blocking um, all malware sites and peer-to-peer. -peer. Um, Umbrella has um, uh, not only category blocking, but um, security blocking right in. And it's 
uh, it, it's very configurable and you can apply that to your whole organization. Um, so if someone accidentally clicks on that bad link, um, your security policies that you have already programmed in Umbrella will stop that user from getting there and prevent um, that infection from even happening before you knew about it, I guess. Awesome. Yeah, we, we have um, a handful of security categories that can be easily enabled, like Brett said, everything from, you know, malware and other categories of um, or specific categories of, of attacks, also to things like newly seen domains. So domains that we might not have enough information on yet because it's the first time we're seeing it. If you're incredibly risk averse, you can block things like that, too. Uh, OK, question number two from Tusar on LinkedIn. Um, did you use forward proxy and EDRs slash AV when you were facing issues with malware? That's a little bit of a tougher question because it really doesn't apply a whole lot in the umbrella environment. Uh, we were using proxy servers uh, or we, sorry, we had investigated proxy servers as a way to um, block this traffic. Uh, a lot of those products were very costly and they required hardware and uh, when we were evaluating what's out there for options, uh, we settled on Umbrella because you don't need any of that. Um, it's, uh, it's so configurable. Um, you know, you could do it from a, you know, a static IP address or you could do it from your Active Directory. Um, but there really isn't a whole lot of real configuration other than pointing them to your DNS servers and uh, programming your policies. Awesome. Thank you, Brett. So to start, um, Umbrella has a variety of different functionality. What Brett and, and his organization uses is our DNS layer security, which does not um, you know, provide a full web proxy, but we do indeed have other packages and have functionality be built within Umbrella that can provide that full secure gateway functionality if needed. Um, but for sure, DNS layer security, way faster to deploy than a, than a you know, traditional proxy. Um, but we we do also have selective inspection within our DNS layer security that looks at risky web traffic for greater web security and doesn't require the full full proxy. Um, okay, question number three from SR on YouTube: Does Umbrella blacklist IP oh blacklist IPs automatically if it's been blacklisted by some other? email rating tool without you having to automatically write a, write a rule. So I think it's basically asking about APIs, automated workflows, and blocking within Umbrella. If I uh, yes, uh, the short answer for that would be yes. Um, you know, Umbrella has a huge network that's connected to Cisco. Um, it's connected to the AMP products, and um, uh, they're, you know, constantly looking at every category and, and almost to a certain extent, almost every website on the internet um, is categorized into, you know, some sort of area of protection. Um, so really, um, no matter what website you're going to, um, there's going to be a score on that website. And, you know, if the score um, has shown previous malware infections or, or bad guys or something, it's going to put it into a, a more risky category or category and probably alert it to you. Um, so you don't necessarily have to um, blacklist your own websites, although there is certainly a global allow list and a global block list um, that you can enforce on your own. Um, and in fact, sometimes categories uh, will, or certain websites will be blocked by a category by accident. Um, and you want to open that up to your organization and um, super easily done with that um, global block or global allow list. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And we do have an enforcement API as well that uh, you could, you know, uh, integrate with an existing tool and automate um, the sending of bad domains or whatever that might be into Umbrella. Um, bad domains, bad IPs. Okay. So uh, another question for you. Specifically, when you were seeing so many, and this is Richard from LinkedIn, when you were seeing so many malware infections prior to deploying Umbrella, what was causing it? Do you have a sense of what, what was causing um, the headache of malware or was it from everything? Well, um, in, in short, it was from more than one source. Um, you know, it, it, it starts with allowing your customers or your employees from um, going to those bad websites. It'll, it'll stop that right away. Um, so if you can't go there, you can't get infected. 
Um, not only that, um, but the um, endpoint protection we're using at the time, just pure antivirus. Um, you know, this is going over 10 years ago. It wasn't as advanced as some endpoint products might be today. Um, so where, you know, we were going on the assumption that, all right, if we get a virus, um, your ERA AV will stop it. Well, in reality, your antivirus product or whatever endpoint security you're using might not have um, zero day um, events on it. Um, and a lot of those vulnerabilities were just purely getting through and they weren't being stopped um, at the antivirus level. And we really uh, weren't stopping them at the DNS level. Um, and, and as soon as we had the ability to stop them at the DNS level, it, it really just transformed the entire organization overnight um, from an IT perspective and support perspective. Okay, another question for you, Richard from LinkedIn. Um, I know you have been, again, a long time OpenDNS, then Umbrella customer, but the question is, did you evaluate when you evaluate an Umbrella? Did you compare it with any competitive solutions or have you compared it to competitors in the past? And what is so different about it? We did, yeah. Actually, we had um, had some trials of certain products that were on the market at the time, and I'm not even sure of their products anymore. Um, uh, WebSense came to mind because uh, we had done a big trial with them, but it was so hard to set up. You had to do port securities, and you could only, you know, protect uh, the network that it was physically on, um, and. When we compared that against um, Umbrella or OpenDNS at the time, where it was cloud-based and DNS level based, um, it, it was really just such a no-brainer because uh, we had a very low budget um, and we couldn't afford to go out and buy hardware at 30 sites. Um, but we could go out and afford and um, uh, you know pay um, OpenDNS and now Umbrella, um, you know, a, a subscription fee because um, the subscription fee is way more costly than buying expensive hardware and keeping it up to date and patched and just all around, it, you know, doing it in the cloud is, is better. Sure. So it sounds like you compared Umbrella to possibly on-prem proxy type or secure web gateway type tools as you were evaluating it. Um, exactly. Yep. Um, uh, several products uh, we looked at, but this this was the winner, no doubt. Awesome. Um, okay, what else do we have here? Okay, so this is a question. I'm not sure if you can answer this one, but okay. Tussar on LinkedIn um, wants to know more about that 10% that Umbrella can't block. So you said, you know, we help to block 90% of malware. Uh, what kind of stuff still gets through, I guess, um, is, is the question here. <clears throat> um, so things that can get through, um, if you're not doing SSL decryption, um, uh, you know, it's really hard for a product to protect you if it can't see what it is because um, that traffic is encrypted. Um, so there is SSL decryption um, and we didn't enable that right away. Um, and as soon as we did, we probably got the other, you know, probably 5%. And, you know, there, there's always gonna be something that gets, gets through. There, there's nothing that's, you know, 100%, but, you know, you can get to that that 95 to 99%, you're doing really good. Sure, yeah, so yeah, so I guess when you started, we likely didn't have SSL decryption available, um, but we do, we do today. Um, so that that helped you, I guess, get get close more of that gap in terms of the the infections and the, the attacks that you were experiencing. Okay, how about, um, let's see here. Uh, from Anne on Cisco.com, does Umbrella integrate with Open LDAP? Um, there is LDAP integration, um, although I'll probably have to refer that more to a Cisco engineer. Um, sure. I wouldn't consider myself a product um, expert on that. Sure. We And, and from Cisco.com, we can find you a person who can answer that, that question in the Cisco world. Um, okay. Now, I can't remember, Brett, if you're using SecureX or not. So there's a question from um, Debbie on LinkedIn um, about SecureX and if you're using the Umbrella and SecureX integration. Um, so SecureX is available, um, and we as a company just started um, enrolling in SecureX. So we're not fully deployed on it, 
but it is most certainly an option that is there and you can enable it. Awesome. And I think you said you have other Cisco security products too, which for sure uh, makes SecureX even more valuable as you can see more um, activity across your Cisco products and, and partner ecosystem type products in this in the single dashboard. Um, let's see what else we got here. Um, Uh, now, when you were comparing competitors, there's a question about info, blo info blocks. Have you come across info blocks at all or evaluated them? Um, or maybe you're even using them in conjunction with Umbrella. I'm not sure. I know there's some overlap and then some discrete functionality for both. Um, I'm not super familiar with that term. Um, so that might be something else we could refer to a Cisco engineer. Sure thing. Okay, anybody else? Those are the questions. We've gotten a whole bunch of questions through a whole bunch of audience questions. Um, I'll pause another minute to see if there's anything, anything else that will come through. Okay, awesome. Well, Brett, it has been so great um, to hear from you. Um, and hear about how Umbrella can help and has helped keep Air deliver effective security, not just to employees, um, but also help to keep passengers safe too. So thank you so much for all of your insights, for all of your time. Um, you know, I don't know if there's any parting words that you would want to say as well, but you know, I'll throw it to you for a second. But thank you so, so, so much. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for the opportunity. It really was a lot of fun um, to have the opportunity to uh, speak with Cisco and all prospective clients out there. Um, I, I, mu I must tell everyone I am the biggest fan of Umbrella. Um, if this product um, sounds like something you need, um, start a trial, uh, get in contact with sales here, you could really have it up and running in literally a few hours. And, and it really is that good. I, I wouldn't tell you otherwise. Um, it, it's, it's an amazing product. Thank you so much, Brett. You just did my job for me. I was just going to close it out to the audience. You know, if, if Brett piqued your interest in Umbrella and you'd like to take Umbrella for a flight test, get it, a test drive flight test. Um, the URL for the free trial should be up on the screen now or soon. Um, so thank you audience too so much for your time and attention. And Brett, thank you again for your, your advocacy here on, on Umbrella. Um, and with that, we'll close out our session. So bye-bye for now and thank you so much.